Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I've been sent this box for the Make a Box Challenge. Now this was something started by Simply Ornate. Then he sent it to Rob from Prickly Source, who then sent it to me. I'll put links below to their channels. So let me show you what was in the box. So we've got a pile of woods there. We've got some maple, some walnut, some Douglas fir, some birch ply, some berberus, some oak and some mango wood. We've got a bit of rock that comes from Dartmoor. We've got some metals here. So we've got some sheets of copper, aluminium and bronze. We've got some copper wire. We've got some steel uh, bar, some aluminium bar, copper pipe. Then we've got some bits from mountain bikes. We've got some tyre, a gear, some spokes, a chain and we've got a can of black spray paint. So what we're going to make. There's one more item I missed off that, and that's this uh, wooden jack plane. So Rob got this at the recycling centre. It's got some cracks in, it's missing a blade, a chip breaker, and a wedge. It's in a very sorry state, so we'll see what we can do with that. So my first idea of what to do with all these pieces is to make a desk tidy for Rob. I'm going to use a bit of maple as a base. So first, I get all the sides squared up using the mitre saw and the table saw. Then I want to put a bevel on the edges. So I set the band saw to 25 degrees. I can then get the piece run through on all four sides, cutting a 25 degree bevel at the bottom. I use the random orbital sander to give the cut a good clean up. Then I could look at using my next material and I thought I'd use this little bit of oak. It's got one flat surface, so I use the hand plane to put another one on it. When I'm happy I've got the two surfaces 90 degrees to each other, I can use the band saw to make the other two cuts. So my thought is to use this old gear and that bit of oak to make a business card holder. So I'm going to cut this in half. Well, not quite in half. I want one side to be slightly taller than the other. So I get it marked out and then use the hacksaw to cut it. So this is how I want it to work. I want to attach one piece to either side of this oak and then you'll be able to put business cards in between. To attach it, I thought I could nail it on through the existing holes. And I've got these spokes that if I cut or snip at an angle, I thought would make great little nails. I get the gear on and then mark out where the nails are going to go. And then because they're not proper nails, I thought I'd drill little pilot holes first. For a bit of added security, I'm just going to knock up a small batch of epoxy, put a dab on the back of each gear, and then I can get it nailed in place. Bicycle wheel spokes make surprisingly good nails. Who knew? So now this organiser needs a place to put pens and pencils. I mark out a line 3cm in along the front of the maple, then I divide that section into four and I drill holes in three points. I drill down with a falsen a bit, about 2cm, and these holes are to accept another material out of the box, and that's these bits of copper pipe. So this bit is dropped down 2cm, then I'm just going to mark round with this ruler so I can cut along that line. Looking at the pipe, I just thought it was 22mm, which I have a cutter for, but it's actually 28mm. So after I scratched my head for a while staring at it, wondering why it wouldn't fit in the cutter, I cut it all down by hand, and then I had to clean it up using the belt sander. I then tried polishing them by hand, but I got bored quickly, so I mounted them in the spindle sander, and this worked much better. When I was finally happy with the finish, I could get some epoxy applied, and then get them put into the holes. I had a bit of epoxy left after doing these three, so I thought I'd put the business card holder on with it as well. When the glue had dried, I could get a coat of Danish oil on it all. So I want to personalise this for Rob, or prickly sauce, so I'm going to cut down some of this bronze on the bandsaw. This is a classic badger camera angle here, an out of focus hand obscuring all the action. Anyway, with two bits cut out, I can get prickly saw stamped onto it. I'm going to mount a name plaque front and back, so whoever's sitting opposite him knows who he is, but he can also look down and check as well. 
I get a pilot hole drilled either end of the plaques and then I can get them mounted. This time with just some copper nails I had in stock. And that's the desk tidy all done. Got a place to keep some business cards and some pens and pencils. Just what any high powered executive needs. So with that done, let's try and make something else out of these bits. Rob didn't want to make things easy for me and included a bit of rock from Dartmoor. Well I had this fossil that I found on a beach in Durham. So I thought I could make a frame to display them. But first I gave them a few coats of clear lacquer to really bring out the colour in them. I'm going to use that small piece of birch plywood to make the frame. So first I rip it down into four strips. Then I make a shallow pass about one centimetre in and then I can turn it on its side, raise the blade a little and make another pass to cut a rebate in it. I then get the stop set up on the mitre saw and start cutting the 45s to make the frame. I get some glue on the mitres, out of frame again, well done Matt and then I can get it all glued up and clamped together. So I've cut that rebate for a backing piece to go in. Normally I'd use a thin bit of ply, but none of that was in the box. But what we do have is this bit of Douglas fir. So I resaw that on the bandsaw. This was pretty much the capacity of this bandsaw, so it just fitted. I could then give it and the frame a sand down. Then the two bits can get glued together. I use the bit of railway line to hold it down and leave it all to dry. When the glue's set, I work out the position I want the rocks to go into. I want them to sit slightly off the back, so the last little strip of ply from when I was ripping it down, I cut a couple of little tabs from that. I get some wood glue on these tabs and just get them put under the rocks onto the backboard. I leave it to dry again and then I tape up the exposed ply edges. Rob said birch ply was his favourite material, so I want to keep these edges exposed, but I'm going to use the can of black spray paint to paint the inside of the box. Whilst I wait for the paint to dry, I use the aluminium sheet and rip it down the same as I did with the bronze. I can then stamp out some labels for the rocks. When the paint had dried, I could remove all the strips of masking tape and then give it all a hand sand. I give the exposed wood a coat of Danish oil and it really brings out the colours in the layers of the ply. Now to get these stones attached, so I mix up a batch of epoxy and get some dabs on those little blocks I glued in. I can then get the stones positioned how I want them. I get some epoxy on the back of the little aluminium nameplates and get them positioned as well. I need a way of attaching this to the wall so I thought I'd make a hanger out of this aluminium rod. I get it in my metal bender and get mostly round the bend but I snap it. It could have done with heating up to make the bend but I had enough left just to finish the bend with a hammer and it ended up being pretty much exactly how I wanted it in the first place. I can then use the bandsaw to get it trimmed down. I position the little loop where I want it to go on the top of the frame. Then I can make a couple of marks where I'm going to drill some holes. I drill down into the frame and then I mix up another batch of epoxy and get some dabs put into these holes. Then this little aluminium loop can get put into place. And that's it all done, a frame displaying a bit of Dartmoor rock and a bit from the coast of County Durham. Now let's have a look see what we can do with that hand plane. From when I was gluing bits in the frame I had some epoxy left, so I used it up filling all the cracks on this plane.
When the epoxy is cured, I give it all a sand down, working my way up through the grits. But I don't touch the sole of the plane. To do that, I tape a strip of sandpaper to the top of my table saw, as that's nice and flat. The sole is quite dinged up, so I start with some 80 grit, and when I get it smooth, I then work my way up through the grits again. Now the plane is missing a wooden wedge to fit in this gap, so in the box was a nice chunk of walnut that I'm going to rip down to fit in there. I measure the opening and this is going to determine what the thickest part of the wedge needs to be. I can then mark it out and draw a taper along it. I can then take it over to the bandsaw and get it cut out. This wedge goes on top of the iron and the chip breaker and they have a bolt going through them so this wedge needs to accommodate it. So I mark out the material that needs to be removed then I can take it back to the bandsaw and get it cut out. I sanded off all the bandsaw marks, then I thought I'd add a bit of badger details to this plane, so I got my branding iron heating up. Then I could get it marked on the front of the plane. To finish it, I give the plane and the wedge a coat of Danish oil. And that's it all done. Take some shavings off this oak with no trouble. The blade is definitely harder to adjust than on a metal plane, but I'm sure with some practice I'll get used to it. Now to have a look to see what we can do with this rusty bike chain. I've got it soaking in some evapor rust, but you can only use it so many times, and I think I need a new batch. So I've got some rust converter on it and left it to work. That cleaned it up nicely. So what I've got is some chain some leather boot laces, some split rings, some clips and a chain tool. So I'm going to use the tool to split the chain up into two link sections. In half of these sections I can then get one of these little clips put in and the pin whacked back in. As the clip is not the same thickness as the chain length I can't use the tool so I've got to use the hammer. I get the pin back in the other ones without anything in and then get a split ring put on. I thread the boot lace through the links with the clip on and then I tie a poacher's knot. I'm not even going to attempt to show you how I did this because I'm no good at knot tying but there's some great YouTube videos if you want to do it. These are sliding knots so you better adjust it to the size of the wrist. I then get the other end tied onto the bit with the split ring and that's it all done. So here it is, got the little clip that just goes onto the split ring and then you can pull on the leather to adjust the length. I had enough chain and other bits and bobs to get six of these made. And that's all I'm going to manage to do from this box, so now it's time to pass it on to someone else. So I'm going to put a box together and give it to Claire from Out of the Woods. I'll put links to her profile and prickly sources down below. When she's done, she is going to send it on to someone else. But if you'd like to have a go, just put a box together and send it on to someone else. Use the hashtag MakeABoxChallenge on social media. I've posted some bits on Instagram myself and so have all the others. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.